In my demonstrations, um, we're building um, an, or manipulating a WebSphere Application Server 8 cell. Uh, in this case, we're using the WebSphere 8 Application Server Network Deployment product, which allows us to have clusters. So this quick uh, overview is to explain the uh, environment that I build in my demonstrations. So we have a WebSphere cell and essentially that is managed by a deployment manager profile. We have a um, two node cluster. So we have essentially um, a managed node called Node01. We have another managed node called Node02. They're two separate WebSphere profiles. Uh, we're all on the same host and these two are, are considered uh, managed nodes. They have um, uh, application servers uh, installed uh, on these uh, nodes and they are installed within the clusters so we have essentially members or clones sometimes is what they're called uh, we have essentially server 1 and server 2 which belong to the app 1 cluster which hosts uh, application 1 we have app 2 cluster which uh, hosts application 2 you can see there's server 3 and server 4 and server 5 and server 6 belong to application 3 cluster so the idea is, is um, we're building this conceptual environment um, and uh, we'll be adding profiles removing profiles installing um, features that are related to you know general administration welcome back to the middleware shop this is Steve Robinson and what I'm going to do now is show how to run the creation of a deployment manager profile in a new WebSphere application network deployment version 8 WebSphere cell. So uh, let's get going. Uh, if we essentially uh, run a command called manage profiles.sh which is in the WebSphere binary root uh, folder, um, the minus list profile options, if we run that it will then list the appropriate profiles that we already have on this box. Uh, in the instance what I mean by profiles we're talking about WebSphere profiles. So um, um, if I print the working directory, we can see that we have the WebSphere binaries and opt IBM WebSphere application server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this profile and then I'm going to create it and show you basically how I um, create a profile. So to, to remove the profile, what we can do is we can do uh, manage profiles dot sh minus delete minus profile name dmgr01. So what this is going to do is remove an existing profile and then what we're going to do is create uh, a, a new profile using an automated script. After the uh, profile has installed we'll get a uh, response uh, from the manage profiles command telling us that we've had inst conf success. This is a very important uh, text message and that comes from the log. So what I'm going to do now is navigate over to the logs. The manage profile command essentially will write to the application server roots logs folder which you can see here there's a folder called manage profiles. If I then um, essentially change directory into the DMGR and I look at what's been happening we'll see um, the details of um, uh, what's going on with any creation activities. If I go back we'll see that there is a log uh, for the delete action that I've just uh, <clears throat> run. So if I then cat um, dmgr underscore delete dot log we'll see that there's obviously some XML and at the very end we've got the install success. So uh, that's way that's that's the way that we confirm that our action has actually worked. Good tip for administrators to is to is to check the logs to make sure that the action whether we create, delete, augment has actually occurred as you have intended. We can see that the uh, deployment manager profile was created in var slash wasnd slash profiles. In fact, this folder was wrong, hence why I'm doing a delete, and then I'm going to do a recreate. So um, what we can do when we create a profile is put the profile in a separate directory from. Um, the WebSphere binary folder. The reason is, is then when we're doing any maintenance um, we can obviously make sure we're not deleting the binaries by accident. Also we can have different file systems set up so that uh, profiles and any actions according to profiles and runtime don't affect the binary 
uh, disk space, i.e. what's available in the file system that the Web server binaries are set to. And this is quite important for enterprise environments. You don't want some action in a, a node or, or a server to, to do something like a core dump and then fill up the file system and then stop Web server from running. Uh, so once we've run a command to uh, remove the um, profile from the um, um, cell, then essentially we need to delete the folder. So now we have no folder here. Now I'm just tidying up here. Um, so um, I'm going to um, remove minus RF the Swiss ND folder because that's not really where I want it on this box. So um, now I have a nice clear um, uh, var folder. So to create a web server profile silently using the command line, what we do is we run the manage profiles command. So what I've done is created a little script called um, uh, create dmgr.sh. And in that script, I've exported uh, some variables. Uh, we have the West binary folder, which is where WebSphere binaries are located. The name of the profile name that I'm creating, which is dmgr01 underscore prof. Um, the West profile directory, which is where I want the root of all the profiles to be. Uh, the cell name of my new cell, uh, the host name um, of this deployment manager. You would use a fully qualified domain in real life. Um, I give it a node name. In this case, it's uh, because I want everyone to know it belongs to cell 01. It's deployment manager 01, managing cell 01. Normally, only ever have one deployment manager. However, there are some considerations in the future for multi deployment managers for backup purposes. We have a starting port, which is 1000. We can actually use a port definition file as a parameter into this um, manage profiles command. But I'm, at this stage, I'm just showing you how to do a, a fixed port for the deployment manager and it will then increment the ports thereafter. Um, we have um, the deployment manager admin user, which is what we want for the console, the username and password for administrative security, and the password is going to be WES admin as well. So it'll run this command uh, from the WES root, manage profiles minus create minus profile name. My profile name isn't up here. The profile path is where it's going to be created. Then we have an option called template path. And the template path essentially you'll see here is um, a bit new in WebSphere version 8. It's using the West binary profile templates management um, folder. But then what we do is we pass in server type as deployment manager. The reason why we have this new feature is in WebSphere version 7, we could just use DMGR as the folder name here. And that template was for deployment manager. But because uh, WebSphere 8 now has job managers and a, the administration or administrative agent, which are newer features, uh, they've basically changed this and the um, DMGR command is uh, deprecated for uh, WebSphere version 8. We then say the cell name, the host name, the node name, the starting port. There's lots of other options that you can look up in the information center at IBM uh, and also the, the command line help for managed profiles. It's the default profile at the stage. Uh, we're enabling security by default straight away and we'll get the default WebSphere settings for that and then the, what's the admin username and what's the admin password. So what I'm going to do now is run my script which uh, we were discussing a few seconds ago and essentially that's going to create uh, a, a profile. So I'm uh, essentially now uh, running that command. What we can do is go into the manage profiles log directory as we can see I discussed this earlier um, and um, essentially we'll see that there's a um, create log. So uh, looking at um, the log here, we can see that we have this new log. So if I tail minus F that log file, we'll then begin to see that there's now some scrolling messages uh, informing us of the uh, process of the profile creation. As you can see now, there's um, some uh, messages coming through here and this will eventually scroll as particular work is done. So if I just uh, be silent for a few seconds, you'll see it starts to scroll. Um, I'm going to pause now and wait till the end. We can now see that at the very, very end, uh, we have a successful installation reported, and that's key that you want to make sure that any management scripts that you create will grep for that to make sure that the log uh, reports success. Coming back to our original window, we can see that um, the installation success is also reported at the end of the uh, scripts running process. If we now navigate to the actual profiles folder, we can see that um, it's been created. And if I list this directory, 
we'll see that the uh, profile exists. So changing into the bin folder, I can then essentially uh, start the deployment manager. So start manager sh and what this will do is invoke the starting process of the um, deployment manager Java process. As the um, configuration is being launched, it will start to scroll what is actually happening on screen. Um, this is a local VM, so it's a little bit slower than obviously a, a, an actual server VM. So we just have to wait um, while the uh, process starts. Once the um, start manager script has started, we'll see that the server DMGR is open for eBusiness, which is a standard WebSphere message. And if we do a PS, PS minus EF and then grep for, say, Java, we'll see that there is now a running process. And you can see here that it's our particular profile. And there you go, there's the deployment manager running. So what we're going to do now is go and uh, open up a browser. So I'm going to load Firefox. Um, and that's going to uh, load up my uh, default browser. And then if I then do HTTP localhost um, port 1 10,000 slash IBM slash console, we will actually have um, the um, deployment manager console. It's obviously um, using self-signed certificates, so I have to understand the risk, add an exception, get the certificate, oh, sorry, confirm security exception, um, let myself log in. We can now see the WAS 8 uh, uh, administration console login screen. The password is WAS admin, and the username is WAS admin. So we log in, and voila, we have ourselves a running deployment manager. What we can do now is complete the process and uh, install uh, any other hosts or create some profiles and then federate them into this particular cell. And um, we're then going to be able to add uh, some uh, JVMs and create some clusters around those JVMs and then we can configure resources as required. There we go, we can see that the console is loaded. If I come down to System Administration, I click on Deployment Manager. It will load the um, view that will show us um, some information about the Deployment Manager. We can see that it's got a name called DMGR. If we look at the ports by expanding it, we'll see that um, the ports were incremented starting with the actual host of this um, administration cl um, console, and then it's just incremented everything by one to create unique ports. If we then navigate to the node section, we'll see here that we have a deployment manager node. It's um, currently um, synchronized, would be because it's only itself. We're in the uh, fixed pack version 8, and, and localhost is our host name. So in the next videos, we'll uh, add some more nodes.